Hey guys, Max Seabag here, and in this tutorial, I will be talking about how to make commands with verbals. And commands are basically when a player says something in the game, a trigger will be run. And I will show you a very basic command, and I will also show you a command with parameters. So a very basic command is slash cmd. And we're, in this map, I'm just showing you guys a text, which will be a hint about all the commands. And in this map, we have leaderboards with um, the fastest player who completed the map. So we have page, we can say page one to get first place to eighth place. And we can do page two for ninth to uh, 16th and then page three, all up to like page six maybe. And this would be really hard to do to manually add all of the uh, triggers, but while we will see in a second, this is all automatic because page thousand would have worked if there was enough players to play the map. So this is not done by hand. This is um, like automatic, automatic uh, parameters. So this is all the triggers I use for this. And I will not be going over this in Plasma 2 Editor because it's very hard to understand and see all of the, uh, what the action does. So what I will do is go into Paint and I will explain here. So first of all, um, First, I set the trigger receiver as the player text receiver. So basically, when a, uh, when a player says something in the game, the receiver trigger will be run every time. And I will also set the variable a request to this. This will be just an example. So what will the receiver what will the receiver trigger do? Well, first it show is is it, it tests if the current player is the player who said the last text and so basically the player initiator in a way and if you're kind of confused about this this is it exactly this thing we did in a previous tutorial where we only showed text to a particular uh, player initiator. The only difference is we set, uh, change the slot to the player who set the text. So next up, we set the string value of variable text to the text being set. So this is a variable, right? Uh, to the text being set. So if I said like, hello everybody, then the variable value will be hello everybody, right? And then I do something really special. I set, set the value of variable text check to the value of text. So basically, if I said hello everybody, and the text is hello everybody, then the text check will also be hello everybody. So I just make a kind of a backup of the variable. And why do I make a, why do I make a backup? Well, I have to use this variable here. Uh, set variable text check to one. If text, if text contains value page, and set text to zero if it doesn't. And I then continue executing trigger if text check equals one. So basically I'm just checking if text contains page. And I couldn't use a text because that would override it with, e with either one or zero. So, and I want to use text later when I want to modify my URL. So I have to use a backup. Okay. And then I add the string value of text to the end of string value of request. So let's say my text was not hello everybody, but let's say it was legit. Let's say it was like page four. This this would be the command and then I would add this uh, to the end of the request 
string. So the entire request would look like something like this. Cool. And then I request a web page of reorel and store the response in verbal response. And then I will activate the timer. This timer has internet calls and 10 delay. So this just keeps running. This keeps, keeps running. And like, uh, just keeps on checking. And this, this trigger only continues executing if response is not equal to loading. So remember here when we, when we request the uh, web page, um, it will be loading if it's not finished loading. So th this just makes sure that we um, we only show the text here if it's finished loading, and we also have to, of course, uh, deactivate the timer. So and then we just show the response that the website gave us. Now you might be thinking, hold on a minute, you're sending the entire string of page four. Why don't you just send in, you know, like four? That would make more sense because that would be easier to read for the web API. And you're absolutely right. But the problem is that Plasma Brace 2 with triggers don't have a way to select only certain parts of a variable. So if we have a string, there's no way to kind of, kind of cut it up. There's it's just not possible with the, with the current triggers we have. So we have to send this in the web API and let the web API handle it. Now I'm going to show you guys my code in the web API very briefly so you can kind of just get the general idea. I will not go into details. So this will be the parameter text. So uh, this will be, for example, page eight, right? Um, so this will be the uh, text, for example. Uh, the number of length is like, how long is this number here? Because we want to read that number. And that is basically, we say, the, the text minus the syntax length, that is this. So let's say if, if our input is here, that would like this. That would mean that the um, the length of the actual number is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So we can have like thousands of pages. <laughs> and this is where I kind of cut it, cut the string up in parts. So I say substring from index five. So if I say this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the first number and then the number length. So this is then one, if it's just one number. And then we're trying to parse that, it's still a string. So we have, we try to parse that into a integer. And uh, if it failed, we just send a syntax error. And if it succeeded, we have to check if it's more than one because if it's uh, like a negative number or zero, that doesn't work. And then we um, run this method here, which just sends in the number that is parsed into integer. And this method here is a uh, SQL query kind of thing. So the page, we get a top number is page times eight, and then we plot that into the SQL query where we say select top, top number, um, and then we get the, uh, we kind of filter it out, we say no. Yeah, so you, I'm not going to explain the SQL actually, <laughs> just, um, you should just figure out C Sharp and SQL if you want to make something unique. So that is pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys the code in detail, but that wasn't really the point of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. I will see you guys later.